Hi, in this video we're going to be doing this problem. We have the definite integral from negative a to a of the square root of a squared minus x squared with respect to x. This problem is from a book by H.B. Phillips and the book is called Integral Calculus and it was published in 1917 and I'm pretty sure it's free. I'm pretty sure if you go online and like search for Integral Calculus 1917, um, I think it's on Google Books or something and they're saying it's, it's uh, you know, it has historical significance. So kind of fun doing a problem from an old book. So this is a problem that requires or that can be done with a trig substitution. So if we let x be equal to a sine theta, then dx is equal to a cosine theta d theta. And we're going to first work out the indefinite integral and then we'll deal with the limits of integration very carefully. There is a subtle point um, in this problem and also a really cool geometrical interpretation of this problem which I'll show you at the end. So let's start with the indefinite version. So we have the square root of a squared minus a squared dx. And this is equal to, so because we have x equals a sine theta, you can come to the side here and you can work this out. So you have the square root of a squared minus x squared. That's equal to the square root of a squared minus and then x is this, so it'll be a squared sine squared. So a squared sine squared. Then you can pull out the a squared and break it up into two square roots like this. So the square root of a squared uh, is just going to be um, a, or the absolute value of a, which we'll assume a is positive, so a. And then here, this is going to be the square root of cosine squared. Now technically, this is a absolute value cosine, and so we have a choice to make. We can make it positive cosine or negative cosine. I'm going to make it positive cosine. So in our assumption here, cosine theta is a positive number. This is very, very important. This is the subtlety which I was talking about. So very key whenever you have definite integrals like this and you're using trig substitution. Okay, so now this piece here, okay, we said that's a cosine theta. So this is a cosine theta. And then dx is a cosine theta d theta. So this is a cosine theta d theta. So this is equal to a times a is a squared. We'll pull it out. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared theta d theta. Because we have cosine to an even power, there's an identity we can use. This is a squared. Integral 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 d theta. If it was sine squared, it would have the minus, okay? And then this is equal to, let's break it up, it's 1 over 2, so it's a squared. 1 over 2 d theta plus a squared. Um, let me just put it like this, a squared over 2 cosine 2 theta d theta. I just want to think about integrating cosine 2 theta. I don't want to have to think about the 2 uh, throughout this process. So this is going to be a squared over 2 times theta, because this is basically 1 half theta, plus a squared over 2. We're trying to integrate cosine 2 theta. Um, so what's a function whose derivative is that? That would be sine 2 theta over 2. Basically, when you integrate cosine of a number times theta, you just integrate the cosine. So you say, what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Sine. And then you divide by the number. That always works. Always works. So sine, and then you divide by the 2. Plus our constant of integration, which I won't bother to write it, because we're, we're going to focus on the definite one in a minute. All right, so this is going to be, let's write it like this. Uh, let's write it, oh, that's an a squared. Let's write it as a squared over 2. Okay, and we can write this as theta. Okay, theta plus sine 2 theta over 2. I have not done this problem in its entirety, okay. I just feel like there's going to be a subtlety here, so... All right, and there is a cool geometric interpretation, I'm pretty sure, so we're gonna to try to figure it out in this problem. So we have this here, so now we need to make a substitution, a change of variables, because we have a definite integral. So let's see, our original substitution was x equals uh, a sine theta. So let's think about what happens here when x is negative a, okay? When x is negative a, come up here. So if x is negative a, 
we get negative a equals a sine theta. So sine theta is negative one. When x is equal to a, that's the upper limit of integration a, okay, we have um, a equals a sine theta. So sine theta is equal to one. Okay, so let's think about what's happening here uh, with these limits of integration. So what is theta? So this is the unit circle. And remember that on the unit circle, every ordered pair can be described as follows. So it's cosine theta, comma sine theta, just like that. Okay, so negative sine is the y coordinate. So negative one is here and then one is here. So the natural choice for me would be to go from negative pi over two to pi over two. We just have to make sure everything's okay. In other words, is cosine positive if we integrate from here to here? Right, if we go from here to here, is cosine positive? Yes, because cosine is the x coordinate. So integrating here in this shaded region from here to here, we're gonna be good. If instead you went from like, I don't know, um, three pi over two to pi over two, like from here to here, that would be a problem because cosine is negative here. So we're gonna go from theta equals negative pi over two, okay, to uh, theta equals pi over two. So it would be wrong if you went from three pi over two to pi over two. In order to do that correctly, you would have had to choose negative cosine theta here. Like if I would have said, hey, this is you know, negative you know, a cosine theta, then it would be okay to go from three pi over two to pi over two because cosine's negative here. But we didn't do that. So we're gonna stick with these limits of integration because cosine is positive over that interval. Okay, so super key, super subtle. Okay, so our original integral was this one, negative a to a, and it was a squared minus x squared dx. And we said that was equal to this, so I'm gonna write it down here, a squared over two bracket theta plus um, sine two theta over two. I'll just put my little negative pi over two up here. And we're going from negative pi over two to pi over two. So plug in the pi over two first. So we get uh, pi over two, and then plus, let's see what happens here. We get sine of two times pi over two. So that's gonna be sine of pi, right? Sine of pi is zero, so this is gonna be zero. Minus, okay, minus, and then we plug in negative pi over two, plus sine of two times negative pi, which is that sine of negative pi, which again is zero, so zero. A sine of pi and sine of negative pi are zero because on the unit circle, um, here's pi and here's negative pi and sine's the y coordinate and it's zero. So when you plug in pi over two and negative pi over two into sine of two theta, that's a two theta, I don't know if you can read it, but that's, that's a two sine of two theta over two. So when you plug in pi over two and negative pi over two there, it's just gonna zero out. So here we're just gonna get uh, a squared over two, pi over two plus pi over two is simply pi. So we get pi a squared over two. So that would be the value of this integral. So what does that mean? Let's think about this. Uh, this is some type of geometric figure. Um, it's a squared minus x squared. In fact, if you set y squared equal to a squared minus x squared, you would see that this is really x squared plus y squared equals a squared. And taking the square root of this, you get y equals plus or minus the square root of a squared minus x squared. So basically we're looking at the top half of a circle centered at the origin of radius a. And so we're integrating from negative a to a. So we're integrating this. So we're basically finding the area under this curve here, which is y equals a squared minus x squared. And so the area is the area of half of a circle. Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. This is a circle of radius a, so it's pi a squared, and we want half of that, boom. So basically, we could have just used the formula for the area of a circle and divided by two, and we would have had the answer to this problem right at the beginning. So kind of quick, I know I did that quickly. Um, I was just working through this and I thought, hey, let me turn the camera on and record it and put it on the internet, and maybe someone can learn even just a little bit of something from this. So I know I went quickly, um, but hopefully it's helped someone in some way. Hopefully some of it made sense. Good luck, keep doing mathematics, take care.